mortgage rates being high and the home builders are probably sitting here thinking let's not get too crazy here i'm like give me as many as i can buy when it gets down to the people that need to there's there's nowhere else to go ladies and gentlemen make some noise for ricky Caru! he is an investor a speaker and soon to be remembered in my opinion as a legend in the industry the cool thing about what he was doing was he was documenting everything. Like he would post his calls, his work he was putting in, the strategies, he was sharing everything. There's so many people who own a house who want to badly move. $100 million rate cap in 2020 was 23,000, three year, 3% rate cap. Now it's 2.3 million for one year. Deals are a little harder to find now because of interest rates, but they are out there. I get a 0% cash on cash return for a half a million bucks. I'm like, I'm not doing that deal. You know? Can you imagine how easy it's gonna be to sell real estate if prices go down 20, 30, 40%? If the inventory did affect prices, People would come out the woodworks. If you want to build cash flow, you invest in real estate. You don't just sell real estate. Making calls, calling for sale by owners and expireds. They want a fixed payment and they want to build equity. Welcome to another edition of Lifetime Cash Flow through Real Estate Investing. I'm Rod Cleef and I'm thrilled you're here. And I know you're going to get tremendous value from the gentleman I'm interviewing today. He's my friend Ricky Carruth. And if you don't know who Ricky is, uh, he is a top shelf real estate agent. He's done a half a billion in sales, but he teaches other agents how to kill it uh, you know, in the real estate space. And you're wondering, well, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about a lot because he's building multifamily. He's great at sales. He's great at marketing. He's got a kick-ass Instagram account. And so there's a lot of things we can talk about that will add value to you, regardless of if you're doing single family or not. So welcome to the show, brother. Thanks for having me, bro. Yeah, of course, man. So, you know, why don't you, uh, why don't we start, you know, like, like most people start and just kind of give us a little background on who you are and expand on, you know, what I just said. Yeah, absolutely. So I live in Gulf Shores, Alabama, mm. right? Right on the beach. Nice. So you've seen pictures of it, right? At mm -hmm. the, you, you saw my talk at, uh, at WealthCon. Right. No, I no, I was I, I wasn't in the room for it. Got you. So yeah. yeah, I showed a picture of, of Gulf Shores. So it, it's basically it looks like Sarasota right. on the beach. Nice. Um, the difference is, like on the beach, it looks about the same. Right. But then right off the beach, it doesn't look like Sarasota. Sarasota has a downtown area and other tall buildings and stuff, and uh, we don't really have that. We just have the tall buildings basically right on the beach. Mm. Um, what's 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 inland? I know you've got some some refineries and things like that up there don't you it's um there's not a whole lot honestly okay. you know there's okay. it's uh it's growing big time mm -hmm. um there's some really incredible schools we have an outlet mall there's a huge uh, amusement park they just built um, oh no kidding okay there's a lot of stuff stuff coming but it's it's uh it's like um let's see every every little beach town you know there's gulf shores there's orange beach those are both in alabama then the next town is pretty to key in florida oh no so kidding. it's right on the florida alabama line gotcha, gotcha. um then you've got pensacola beach is that just the poor man's riviera right i don't know if it's no, that's, I don't know. that's what they called it uh, that's what i heard it called in uh on the on the uh, panhandle you know yeah. I, i've been i've been to panama city and um oh god what's that town that they did the the um Oh God! What was that movie where they had the little town and and they they videoed? Uh, oh, I'm there's Mexico that. City. There's uh, Palms Beach. There's there's there's, uh, there's Navarre. There's uh, there was a movie. There was a movie where they filmed this kid growing up through the movie, and he was in this enclosure. And I was just trying to think who the actor was. Anyway, never mind, never mind. But it was up there in one of those towns. Was, yeah. But that, those beaches are gorgeous. At least. In the panhandle i mean mm -hmm. they're wide they're white yeah just absolutely it's white gorgeous. powder sand yeah, so people don't realize alabama has beaches yeah and like you got that. beaches like that over there too yeah like they have now. Wow. oh yeah oh yeah it's all it's all the same beach nice so the florida beaches run run into alabama a good gotcha. 40 miles so we got about 40 miles of those white sandy beaches wow and it's always been a really small town so it's still about between both towns gulf shores and orange beach it's still about 25,000 population. Wow. But we've got 8 million visitors every year that come through. So a lot of Airbnb and so uh -huh. on and so forth there. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. Right. So so it's an interesting market because mm. it's small town on the beach. It's nice. It's cool to live there. And there's this massive market of, 
you know, vacation slash investors that come down and from all over the country that buy these Gulf front condos mm -hmm. and houses and stuff. And so that's the market I got into. Got it. So I grew up roofing houses with my dad. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. He owned a roofing business for 30 my, years. My brother owns one and my boy was just here and uh, he works for him and he, they had hail up in Denver and he's like made a hundred grand a month for the last two months. So, cause you know, insurance pays for the roofs. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we, we chase storms and stuff yeah. for a little while here wow. and there, but I grew up doing that. And then that's uh, real work. That has a lot to do with where I'm at now. Yeah. That <laughs> you know, work ethic? Like, yeah. I mean, I yeah. said, you know, I just got the, this, this brand new roof on my compound here. I, you probably didn't notice because they just cleaned everything out, but uh, brand new roof. It, it's, a you know, it's a tile roof. Tile, yeah. 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 They, they just finished it literally a few days ago. Wow. And uh, they have to come in and polish it. I did it notice off. it. Yeah. yeah I did, did notice oh. it looked pretty, pretty good. Yeah. It's brand new. <laughs> brand new. Yeah. It's as good as it's ever going to look. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, Hurricane Ian was good to me. You know, I, I, yeah. got, I got the roof, I get painting, I'm getting all new pavers. It's gonna look like a brand new place. But so yeah. this is uh, how far is how far are you from Fort Myers? Uh, about 45 minutes. Okay. Yeah, that's so where it hit far. hard. Yeah, that's where. And it then hit hard. and then you're and then between here and there is is Venice. No, there's Venice and then there's Port Charlotte. Okay. Now uh, I used to be the largest single family homeowner in Port Charlotte. I had about 360 houses there when Charlie hit. Mm -hmm. Talk about a freaking nightmare. What year was that? Oh, God, I'm bad with dates. But it, but was, it was, was in the 80s, 90s? Uh, it would have been in the 2000s, 90s, I think, 90s. the 90s, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was, uh, that would talk about a shit show. I mean, it, it was the most complex logistical thing I ever had to deal with. I which, bet. You know, 360, they were all damaged, every single yeah. one of them. But you yeah. know what was interesting, and I don't want to get back to your story, I don't want to steal your thunder here, but what was interesting is, you know, the, 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 the building codes and standards really make a freaking difference. Because I would have houses that were built in the 60s that would have the whole garage blow away, the whole roof blow away. Literally, I had one guy that was in his living room and everything from the ceiling line blew away. So it was just daylight everywhere. And he was hiding under his couch. And, mm. uh, uh, but, but that would be next to an 80s built house that had a few shingles missing. Mm. I mean, it was astounding to see mm -hmm. what a difference building codes make mm. for hurricanes. But yeah, I, mm -hmm. I, I had a huge, almost a million dollar settlement here on my compound. So I'm, I'm getting redone. But of course, you know, insurance has gone through the freaking roof. Oh, in these yeah. Coastal towns. yeah. Well, because of this, you know. Yeah. But. I, uh, I, I had, I don't know, when Hurricane Sally hit us last, maybe a couple of years ago, I had about, at that time, I was at about 20-something properties. Mm -hmm. All of them got hit. Yeah. <laughs> I had to put roofs on half of them, mm -hmm. and I had to pay for all of it. Oh, you did? Yeah. Why? Yeah, because the insurance adjusters go in there, and they'll say, okay, you know, it's this much damage, right? It, okay, the whole roof's totaled, all right? Okay. It costs 12000 to re-roof this house. All right, your deductible is thirty five hundred. Your roof was X amount old, so the depreciate we de we're going to depreciate the the, the ten thousand or whatever. So we're going to get a public adjuster to help you. A public adjuster? Yeah, public adjuster. You you would have you, uh, those of you listening. If you ever have an insurance claim of any consequence, hire a public adjuster because what a public adjuster does is they fight the insurance companies and they do their own estimations. And um, and they always make you money. Yeah. I, 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 I had a public adjuster down in Port Charlotte and they and we actually had to sue the insurance company. But here in this compound, I uh, hired a public adjuster, paid him too much. I paid him 10 percent. But um, but he absolutely made me money. Like we just had a fire in my Nashville asset, 20 units. And I've got a kick ass public adjuster there that is absolutely getting our our estimate up from the insurance company they almost yeah. always pay for themselves and then some yeah but yeah. Uh, but anyway yeah so it, it's no fun dealing with insurance companies and and if you ever have big claim get help but shop the public adjusters because some of them aren't any good and some of them are we had a tornado destroy 101 units up in uh, beaver creek ohio a complex i have up there and uh we had an awesome public adjusting company up there as well that rebuilt all 101 units literally um mm -hmm. but uh but anyway so keep going with your story, man. Yeah, and that's good information to yeah. know. Um, but anyway, I got in real estate. I got, actually, I got I had a scholarship, football scholarship, to Missouri Valley College. Mm -hmm. I went there for a semester. It was too far away. It was like a 20-hour drive. Oh, wow. So I, uh, I was like 18. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm 
I don't want, you know, I went there for a semester, enjoyed it, came back home, went to Alabama for a semester, fell to history class. And I was like, <laughs> I'm out of here. Really? That was yeah, it. Huh? College just wasn't my thing. Mm hmm. Uh, I made all A's and B's in high school sleeping. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was the guy in class with my head down on the desk. Mm -hmm. um, it was just easy for me because I could absorb the information and the tests were easy. Sure. But in college, especially history class, you know, um, they're just up there lecturing. And I'm just like, what is this guy talking about? Right. And, <laughs> you know? and, and, what, and what's it going to do for me in any way, shape, Unless or Unless you just love history. Right. You know, I right. told that to a guy last night at dinner. And he's like, well, I'm a history major. And I'm thinking, good gosh, this guy is very interested in history, which it's good to be interested in history. Um, just wasn't my interest. I was more focused at the time. Just like now, I'm just more focused on trying to be productive. And I felt like that was more of a, you know, curiosity, entertainment, you know, if I want to know this kind of thing. It's almost like watching a Netflix movie to kind of learn history. You know, 67% of the people that go to college never use their degree for anything. In fact, mm. it might even be more than that. And then, and then of course, there's that statistic that, that uh, you know, what is it, 80, 90% of the people out there have, have uh, less than 10,000 in savings and, and the people that go to college have huge student loan debt. And, you know, college isn't, isn't really helping a lot of people. I mean, if you're doing a yeah. technical role, like an engineer, dentist, doctor, something like that, college is great. I didn't go yeah. to college. Well, I mean, you got to go to college to yeah. be a doctor, right, lawyer, right. et cetera. Right. But it's uh, nowadays, you know, I mean, it used to be you had to. Right to have a career worth anything, you know, now, <laughs> you know, you can pretty much do just about anything you want to do learning uh -huh. off of. Yeah. Thought leaders like you and I, I mean, I, I, I have a picture that I show where I'm, I've got my arms straight out and I've got lanyards, hundreds of lanyards around my neck and on my arms from boot camps and masterminds and events that I've gone to mm. over the years. And that's my college. And you saw my library downstairs. I've mm. got thousands of books. I'm very well read. You know, college wasn't the right thing for me, is it? Just like it wasn't for you. But we're yeah. both super successful because we have work ethic. We knew what we wanted. And we just went after it, right? I still continue to to read. I read. Right. You know, I read. I write. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm always trying to learn and everything. But you wrote a couple of books, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I wrote two books in seventeen. It, yeah, it, you know, I, let, let, I'll get to that. Mm -hmm. I uh, I got in O two selling real estate. I dropped mm. out of college and I was like, I'm going to go be a real estate mogul. Right, <laughs> so I got right. my license. I quit roofing. I was like, see you dad. Right. Got on, got in the office, uh, full time for 30 days, sold zero, mm. you know, said, Hey dad, I'm back. Went back to roofing, doing oh, that, yeah, like, doing that oh, at the shit. same time. Oh, yeah. So it took me eight months to get to my first deal. Then I started clicking to a month, left mm. the roof, went full time, made a lot of money because the market exploded. I when was, was this, uh, 02, 03, 04. Oh, yeah. The market just, it did a lot. It was real similar to what just happened in 21. And, oh, sure. You know, 20 and 21. But 2021 was, to me, a lot more violent than, <laughs> the market was a little more violent than uh, uh, 02, 03. It, it, um, Buffett's famous quote, be fearful when others are greedy. A lot of greed last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. the fear's coming. Be greedy when others are fearful. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah, incredible right. opportunities coming, right? But. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but I, I started flipping houses. Mm -hmm. You know, there were guys 30, 40, 50. Where I was, were you doing this? In the same place? Go yeah, Gulf okay. Shores. Yeah, okay, I was, gotcha. I was, uh, I was in my, it was in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. And there were guys 40, 50, 60, you know, flipping houses and, I was like, okay, here's some money. So I would start flipping houses. Nice. And um, I made millions. Mm -hmm. And um, I had about $2 million worth of debt, you know, that I got caught with when In everything. It, no, it was actually 05. Mm. 05 is when the market actually started coming down. Hmm. People think 08. It's actually 05 is when prices leveled out and started coming down slowly. And, you know, if you watch the movie The Big Short, mm -hmm. Great movie. Um, Very accurate, too. Yeah, it, it was. Um, you know, I lived it. Yeah, me too. Um, but the guys that were calling it, you know, they, they were betting on, they were, they were shorting the market. And, uh, you know, these, the, you know, the, the bonds that they were shorting against on the, on the mortgages that they knew were bad, mm -hmm. they were still doing well, mm -hmm. you know, even after things turned, right? So in, in 05 is actually when the market started turning. Hmm. And, uh, 
you know, the, the guys are like, why aren't, why aren't we making money? You know, the market's going, the prices are going down. We're mm. starting to see defaults. Mm. Why aren't, you know, why aren't, why aren't our, our, why isn't our bet paying off here? Mm. And it took, cause it, it was because wall street was, was padding it. They were, they were doing everything they could to try to act like this wasn't happening. Really? Or, yeah. They were, they were, um, you know, doing what they could do to manipulate, to keep everything to where it looked well, like everything that was, was okay. On. Yeah. I, I, I'll be honest. I didn't, I didn't, this is news to me. I lost $50 million in 2008 and nine. I got crushed mm -hmm. at 800 houses and got crushed. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, of course I wasn't paying much attention and I was recently single and I was in South beach, like an escape convict with the mm -hmm. condo and the Lamborghini. It was, it was a shit show, but, but I, so I didn't have my eye on the ball at all, yeah. but, but when I wait and happened, it was like, to me, it was like a light switch. Yeah. I mean, I mean it yeah. was like, I couldn't sell my whole portfolio for 30 cents on the dollar. I yeah. couldn't give it away. Yeah. Uh, well, that's when everything kind of came, came out, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's when it was like a public, publicly known, right. I mean, like Lehman, real estate Lehman prices collapsed. have been coming down yeah. for years before yeah. that. But nothing really happened with the stock market and, or anything because right. Wall Street manipulated that situation as long as they could yeah. until they just couldn't anymore. And then because of that, it crashed even harder. Interesting. I didn't but know yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. If you, look, if you go back and look at a, a graph of just home prices, you know, it you topped out it. in 05. Mm -hmm. And then it went down all the way to 2012. Yeah. So I sold my last condo January 05. And, uh, of course, I had all that debt from all the houses I was in the middle of flipping. So I got caught there. Mm. I bleeded out my savings just trying to hang on to everything. Yeah, thinking, well, everybody was saying this isn't going to, this is, you know, give it a couple months, give it six months, a year, whatever. So you weren't able to flip, in other words. You had house, you had inventory you couldn't sell. Right. I was, gotcha. I was flipping and I would buy two more and I'd buy mm. four more and I kept flipping. And, um, so you had a little implosion? When everything, when everything turned, um, I could I could basically sell I sold off most of what I had just for what I owed. Oh good. Well at right? least you got out of it. Yeah. And there were a couple that I did have to let go back to the bank, mm. foreclose on. But then I was like, Hey Dad, You're back. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Give so me a hammer. <laughs> go back to the roof. Um oh, that was oh five. And that's um, humbling, isn't it? It was. That's really humbling. It I will was. I would tell you, I tell a story at my boot camps where, you know, I uh I was flipping houses, making a lot of money. I lived in what would be about a $2 million house now. I had a Rolls Royce. I had a Pantera, uh, if, which is a Ford exotic, gorgeous cars. Uh, you know, I had a Corvette, and, and I lost everything. And, and I had to go paint houses to have enough money to eat. And I remember my mom bringing me a bag of groceries because she was worried about me. So I went from Rolls Royce to mom bringing me freaking groceries. Mm. I remember having a meltdown. Mm -hmm. It was like, fuck this. I'm going to get back, get, kick my, get back on my feet and make it happen. But Yeah, I, I went back to roofing and I was like, okay, what am I going to do? Right. Um, I went, I filed bankruptcy. I had oh, some things geez. I had to kind of get out from under me. And then, um, I should have, by the way, I didn't, and I should have when I, I let everything school. go. I had nothing. Yeah. There's only two things I continue to pay for my cell phone. Cause I wanted yeah. to keep my number right. and my real estate license. I wow. kept my MLS fees. Sure. That's the only two things I didn't pay car insurance, payments, rent, utilities, nothing. Right. So how long did you suck it up in the roofing before you're like, screw this. I need to go back or do something else. Well, I actually, that was Oh five and Oh six. Mm -hmm. And then in Oh seven, the entire year from basically January, to January of 08, um, I got a job on an oil rig. No kidding. Yeah, in Mississippi. Wow. I was I was driving there from Alabama. Out there on a rig? On a rig. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. I was living, and it was cool, because like, I was actually sleeping on friends' couches and sleeping in my car. Wow. So when I got the job on the oil rig, it was cool, because it was like kind of like I had a pl not only this job that was going to pay me five Gs a month, right. at working every other week, so mm -hmm. a week off, so I'm only working half the time making five Gs. Wow. Um, I also had a place to live for a week hmm. and on my weeks off, I figured, well, this is a, this is a way for me to get back into real estate. Cause I forgot a whole week in between sure, you got time. my work weeks to kind of like start really trying to figure out how to get back into the market. It didn't quite work out like that because, well, the timing, when you work on the a, timing wasn't good. Well, when you work on the oil rig, it actually was good. Really? When you work on an oil rig though. When you come back home, you're completely like shot for like, it takes you three or four days to recover because you're working 12 hour days. Wow. And every other of the, every other weeks, you're working either six to six at night for the whole week or six to six, you know, all day. Well, so 
They're 24 hours? It's not 24, it's 12, but you're okay. either working from 6 to 6 during the day, 6 okay. in the morning till 6 at night, okay. or and then you go home for a week, and then the next week you come back, you'll work from 6 at night till 6 in the morning. Oh, God, no. So you're messing up your sleep oh, yeah. schedule, right? So you're just all discombobulated oh, I get it. every I just, time. I just got off that boot camp, and, and I'm still, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at about 70% now. And, and what is it? Today's Friday, and it ended on Sunday, so I feel you. So you weren't able to work the real estate. I wasn't yeah. like I thought I would. Hmm. Um, I did mess around with it and stuff. What I realized in 07 when I was on the rig was there was this guy that mentored me in the beginning in 02. And uh, I realized in MLS, he was he sold 30 properties in 06. Hmm. And 06 was a really bad year, uh, you know, for us. Right. You know, beachfront condos, it's a luxury. You know, sure. it, it's it's the first thing that people let go of when things something are going. Something you want, not something you need. Right. It's right. the first thing. It's not primary home. It's right. not a necessity. It's they let it go. It's the first thing they let let go, and it's the first thing. It's the last thing they buy as as things get good. Right. Interesting. Yeah. So you know, we were kind of the first. You know, our market, a second home market, vacation market, is really going to be the first to really fill. You were like uh, the 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 canary in the coal mine kind of a thing then. Really. Right. They, which is, you see, because I didn't feel it at all, mm. you know, because rent sta stayed stable. I, really, I, I had stopped buying because I thought it was too high mm. at that time. It's not now com compared to what I can, what do you pay now. It's not even the same planet, but interesting. So you, yeah. you, you were kind of, you, you actually saw it probably before other people did because... Yeah because of where you yeah, were. Yeah, 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 okay. I, I think absolutely. That makes sense. So it kind of it kind of hit us a little differently, um, you know, a little earlier. But even when you look at national home prices, they still topped out in the beginning of 05 and, 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 and tapered down. Hmm. It was just such a slow, gradual decline. It's like how home prices go up and down every year. Mm -hmm. If you look at national home prices, they go, they do this every year. You know, summer they're up, fall they come down. It's a stair step. They're, you know, the, ne the next low is higher than the last low. The next high is higher than last high hmm. but they still fluctuate through the year now, right now, i've seen some of your posts on social and and you're still bullish that you, well tell me what you think's going on with home prices right now i'm sorry to derail your they're your pretty bio. they're they're pretty leveled they're you know right, right now, now. So they're i mean they're yeah flat pretty much okay. i think i mean they're you know they're higher i mean you know there's data there's i mean just about every you know real estate you know, data company has us up on the a year over year, you know, like August to last August or whatever, we're up like 2% or whatever the case may be. But when you're looking at medium home prices and you're looking at average home prices, you know, it's just like, and, you, and that's averaging all the markets. Right. And then you're- So there's some markets that are different than others, yeah, obviously. Uh, right? Of course. And, right. and, and then you've got different sectors in the market, high end luxury mm, and right. then low end stuff. And there's just so much stuff. So it's right. kind of hard to say, okay, this is where it is. Um, you know, I've, Elon Musk had a quote um, where he said, commercial real estate is what's going to cause this recession, mm. but residential will follow after that. So that's that's his opinion. Uh, that's a direct quote. From a guy that doesn't own a house. Well, okay. You know? <laughs> or, or, or is, the, or is well, it in the real... he is a pretty smart guy. You or give him or that. is it in the real estate you know, industry? But yeah, he's a really smart guy. Yeah. Um, well, we'll see. Well, well, we'll see. It's kind of like one of those things, you know, throw a quote out there. If it comes true, you're a genius. Yeah, well. You yeah. know, okay, if it doesn't, enough. then, So you, you heard know, that quote, who cares? So you were ready for it. You heard that one. Yeah. I heard it. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I mean. You don't agree. Well, it, it's two different sectors. Yeah. I mean. Agreed. Agreed. It's two different sectors with completely different financing terms. Agreed. You know, agreed I mean, commercial is more of a floating, you know. Five year. We have you some know. of it's floating. Some, I mean, we, some we, of we, it. We do conforming debt. That's ten, more, more of it than than, than well, that's residential. That's going to cause the crash. Is the floating? Okay, yeah, that's the bridge debt. That's right. going to cause cause a problem for 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 operators in the commercial world. And then in space. the commercial, right? You've got the huge office. No, oh, yeah, you know that's that's, that's a train wreck. Right yeah, there. right. You got the warehouse. You got the small office. You know, like I buy two thousand square foot office buildings. Well, oh, those are great. They're amazing. Yeah, no, those are fantastic. I mean, you they like talking like flat, where you've got a little office in the front, you've got a warehouse in the back. Yeah, those yeah, are fantastic. Those or you know, the, I've got a couple that are do that are commercial duplexes, just a mm, thousand nice. square foot on each side. Nice. You know, I've got one that has like a really small little warehouse, almost like a little storage unit, and then about I don't know seventeen hundred square foot of heated and cool offices and stuff. Hmm. Um, they call that flex space, right? 
that what they call that? Well, I, I rent it out to one one company. Yeah, no, but, but I, I where where it's flexible, where you can you can expand the office or put yeah. in more warehouses, yeah. stuff like yeah. that. It was actually know. a warehouse. The whole okay. back of it, half of it was a warehouse, right. and I finished it out as okay. offices. Gotcha. To add more heated and cool square footage, and then I left like a like. I've, a, I've never done any of that, but I really like it, and I know it does really well. Yeah, I mean, forget office right now. Jeez, I think the office occupancy in the country is like seventy percent. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. we're going to see massive defaults. And the, here's the problem. A third of that debt is with small and regional banks. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see more bank failures too, for sure. And then you've got bridge debt, which is collapsing right now. Man, I've, I've seen some huge world-class operators that are in deep shit mm -hmm. right now. I mean, they're, mm -hmm. they're having real problems. I just saw an article in Real Page on somebody I really had a lot of respect for. I'm not going to throw it out here publicly, but man, I, I knew that he was in trouble. I saw him at WealthCon at, at Grant Cardone's thing. He came up to me. He's like, yeah, I've got 13 assets that are in trouble right now. And he was freaking. Mm -hmm. And he just had one go back to foreclosure. I just saw that in Real Page a couple of days ago. So, I yeah, mean, but back to Elon's yeah, quote, right? Yeah. My point is, is that 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 space, commercial space, is completely different animal than Agreed, this. Agreed, but if it starts a bank collapse and it stocks, it starts a stock market collapse. It, it, it to me, it's it could very well be a domino thing. That so. could bleed into unemployment, and it then, could bleed into right. in, into the housing market, right? Yeah, um, but the I housing market, thinking, the yeah. housing market itself is is fundamentally strong incredible yeah and right? there's a huge pent up demand too especially if the rates come back down well right? i mean here's the thing okay um there's so many people who own a house who want to badly move right but they can't right what do you call that pent up demand right and that that group is growing every day mm -hmm. and out of that group every day they their desire explain to explain why they can't just in case well not well sure. they're sitting on three or four percent right. mortgage right now right um if they go buy a new home they're gonna it's gonna be six and a half to seven and a half they're gonna literally double their mortgage rate right. just to move and they just yeah it might not even be that they can't they okay, they don't want to, right. you know, most of them can financially, mm -hmm. but why would you want to go from a three to a, to a seven? Yeah. Um, and so this group of people who own houses, it's, it's, they have these, what they call, you know, golden handcuffs, right? They, they're, they're, it's, it's a mat, like we don't even realize it. And the next thing is first time home buyers. Mm. We have no earthly clue we're clueless when it comes to understanding the amount of first time home buyers that are just sitting there that haven't even said anything because of interest rates. We, in, in 1990, there was such a spike in birth rates. If you look at a 50 year birth rate, you know, chart, there's a spike that's massive in 1990 that stays at that level for a good decade and a half, mm -hmm. all the way to 06 or so. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if they're born in 90, that means they're 33. Right, the average age of a first-time home buyer is thirty-three to thirty-six. Is it okay? So, so we're looking at this massive group of thirty-three-year-olds, right, this year, and these people want to own homes. You see these headlines saying, you know, Gen Z and millennials, and they want you know, to rent and stuff. Yeah, they don't want to buy lot. homes. Right. They're just and right. then and then you read the article and you look at the data, and it's literally got like twelve, thirteen percent, you know, and they'll have it with the different. It'll be like. This, you know, 13% Gen Z, you know, like, you know, 13% millennials Millennial, right. and whatever don't want to own a house. And I'm thinking, well, okay, that's 12% that don't. What about the 88%? What about the other 88%? Right. Do they want to? Yes, they do. See, the... the, the but the problem is, the, 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 you know, you could get a 3% loan 18 months ago, and now the in mortgage is, is double. Yeah. And the prices haven't gone down to, yeah. to, to justify that yeah. doubling in mortgage. But the payment. longer the rates stay up... Mm -hmm. That, re that, more demand. that that retracts the these transactions and restricts the market the more demand yeah. is going to be the more the more demand is building and it's going to just be that bigger of an explosion yeah. when it goes the other way yeah you know so through first time home buyers and sellers it's just we don't even it, <laughs> like it's it's nothing we've never even seen anything like this and what's going to happen is that the trade up seller they'll list their home Okay, which adds to inventory and the mm -hmm. new listing, but they're also going to take a home off the market as they upgrade. 
Right. They're going to buy, right. they're going to sell, they're going to so, buy, so which is going to be a net even right. for active listings. Right. And then the first time home buyers are going to come in and take one off, which would be a net negative for active listings. So what is that scenario going to do to the market? We're going to have an uptick in new listings. We're going to have an uptick in transactions because of all this stuff happening. But active listings are going to go down, are mm. going to go from bad to worse mm. when this happens. Um, and then How's the new construction right now? I'm sure you track that as well. I don't pay attention to new home construction. Has that dropped or is it still? It's still the same. Okay. They, they, it seems like, so there was just a report, they just did a report where there were less home starts than we've seen since 2020. Hmm. Um, but permits are up, you know, over a year ago, but still, you know, down. Hmm. Um, I think I think I'm, I'm kind of conflicted with that data because w what I feel like is two things. One, yes, it mortgage rates being high, and the home builders are probably sitting here thinking, let's not get too crazy here, right? right? Home uh, the 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 percentage of new homes being bought is like in the third a third of the What's homes, the interest rates? which is higher than it has probably ever been, mm -hmm. right? And what they're doing, the big home builders, they're buying down the rate. So I just bought five Dr. Horton homes. Did you really? I bought I bought five. I closed on just three. Or, yeah, I bought three. I closed on three. I've got two more that I'm closing in the next couple of weeks. They buy down your interest rate. Yeah. So yeah. I got a five point nine on an investment for for what period of time? So thirty year. Th they bought it down for yeah, thirty years. Yeah, all the way. Wow. So so I've got I've got five point nine on on a on a 30-year fix Where for at? it's on gulf shores oh no kidding for an investment property where um you know like i'm buying these for like three to 350 hmm. they're four bedroom hmm. two are on a lake nice three are like right across from the the street from this new amazing new school they're fixing to build for gulf shores public school and um my payments are like 1600 and I'm renting them out for twenty four, twenty five hundred a month. I'm like, give me as many as I can buy. You know? what, kind of, what kind of financing you get on those? Just curious. I did twenty percent. Fannie Mae, Fannie Mae, or yeah. Oh, so the Fannie Mae. So you have a yep. limit of like eleven or twelve, I think. I can only do ten. Ten. Okay. I can only okay. do ten. Yeah. Uh, it's been so long since. I've I done think that. I still see. I, I buy cat. I buy a lot of stuff cash. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, so I've still got like one or two. Of loans, loans of, of like like conventional loans that I can get. Then you can go to banks, though. I mean, yeah, well, there's, will do it too, there's but, so many different things you can yeah, do on top of that. But you get the best rates and stuff whenever you, you know, conventional. Well, I told you we could debate single versus multi, but, you know, that, those sound like good deals. You know, I, I, I'm kind of down the th on the thing single for me, rentals. The thing for me on me. that debate is, is this. I don't really know where multifamily is right this second. Yeah. So when I when I uh, decided I wanted to kind of start to think about syndication, how mm -hmm. to syndicate, right. learn that game, since mm -hmm. I have such a big following, I was like, okay, I could raise some money for should've some deals. Should have come to my boot camp, brother. Yeah, That's yeah, I should have been there. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I could raise some money mm -hmm. easily. Um, right. And so this was I don't, this was two years ago or so. That I you really started thinking about it that I really started researching and trying to understand the game. Mm. And cause I didn't want to just jump in. I wanted to really understand sure. everything. And then interest rates started to come up, mm. you know, last March. And then I said, okay, like, we, you know, we need, I need to be even more patient. So I've just been kind of riding out this little opportunities coming brother yeah i've just been right kind of now, riding out of this little oper south. this little this little wave mm -hmm. knowing that there's a lot of a lot of these multifamily loans coming due mm -hmm. over the next you know year or two 1.6 trillion in commercial debt coming due by the end of next year yeah, yeah that 1.6 trillion i mean that's a staggering amount yeah yeah uh, and 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 a good half a trillion is multifamily right and so, you know, and those those people, those people that have loans come and do have two options. They can either sell or they can refinance. Sales are down 80% now year mm -hmm. over year. So they're not mm -hmm. selling very well. Mm -hmm. And refinancing is a nightmare because they have to buy the loans down to have a to even be, have a lender sniff at them because the mm -hmm. debt service coverage ratio is not there. Yeah. And then and then forget about rate caps. Rate caps are insane. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, I, I I tell a story about a $100 million rate cap in 2020 was 23,000 three year 3% rate cap now it's 2.3 million for one year mm -hmm. i mean so these you know, they're, they're falling like flies so there's there's opportunities going to be distressed assets i just started a, a distressed asset fund 
Um, you know, if you're interested in it, text the word uh, partner to 72345 to talk to our team. But, but I started an opportunity fund. And what's cool about it is the money's going into a, a, a interest bearing account. It's going to be like 4% interest. And we spread it out. It spreads out over multiple banks. So it stays under the 250,000 FDIC limit. So the money's uh -huh. safe if the bank fails. Uh -huh. um, so it's, so, you know, there's a return on the money, but, but we're, I'm starting to stockpile cash. I mean, yeah. I have a lot of cash personally, but I'm, you know, I'm, I want to take advantage of what I believe is coming. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And it's good that you waited too. I think you know? I'm just being patient. So yeah. these new, these new construction homes, it's almost like I got bored kind yeah, of waiting. Gotcha, and now I saw gotcha. these opportunities. I'm like, well, I'll just put some yeah, money you here. Don't lose anything. Yeah. Else, I mean, yeah. let me, let me put some money here. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm, mm. I'm, I mean, as multifamily deals come across my desk, I mean, they do constantly yeah. by the way. Really? And I have underwriters and, oh, and do we're, you? Good. yeah, we're okay, looking good. at stuff every day. Oh, good. So we, you know, I've got a, I've got a group and, you know, we work together and nice. uh, we're looking at deals all the time. So, nice. you know, um, we're just being super patient and we're just waiting on like those really amazing deals to come right. through. Right. Cause you know, what's the point in just, you know, jumping in the first deal that I do where I take someone's money to do a deal. I want it to be you want to know a the, home run, home run. You know? And you want to be completely up to speed. Yeah. And these like deal, a lot of these deals we see right now are just kind of weird. No, no, you know, they they're no, just, a lot of them don't make sense. Yeah. Man. They're just, they're strange. You know, yeah, it's no. just like how, how in the world can you even, but anyway, yeah. um, yeah. So long story short to finish my story up, right. um, I uh I went, I got laid off from the oil rig. Oh. When Obama came in in 08, hmm. cut off a lot of the, you know, money to the gas companies to drill, stuff like that. Uh, you know, and the market was crashing, so, you know, gas prices were coming down and, you know, gas prices went through the roof as the market escalated hmm. and all these comp gas companies were drilling, you know, like, "Hey, let's take advantage of this rush." And then when everything started to come down, they drilled less. They were shutting rigs down, laying people off. So I eventually got laid off. And um, I was the last guy out of 52. There were 52 guys in my position out there on different rigs. And uh, I was the last one of the 52 that they let go. They held on to me as long as they could because mm -hmm. I was just out there like a squirrel. And back mm -hmm. then, you know, I was like in the best shape of my life. Oh, I mean, sure. I was just... Right slinging sledgehammers and then um hmm. they got it, it actually got to where the drillers which is kind of like the the you know he's kind of like the the team leader if you will of, mm -hmm. of the of the crew mm -hmm. right that's out there it got to where it was only drillers drillers were actually taking my position they were just getting down to where just drillers on rigs anyway i got laid off and luckily i went and talked to this mentor that had sold all those properties in 06 mm -hmm. he told me kind of what he was doing it was just a Wait, change so when of, was this the, in 08 oh wait gotcha january okay. february ish of 08 interesting or, or it might have even been april or hmm. march something uh, right, when right i actually, when things were starting to come unglued when i actually got laid off and and luckily enough i had i had already been dabbling back in the real estate mm -hmm. and uh i remember I, and i had two closings lined up it was two buyers and the the week before the close, the, they closed on the same day. And that's kind of crazy too. And this is the first time I actually realized this, that my first closing ever was my grandmother's condo. Hmm. And I closed on another condo that I had listed and I closed on my grandmother's condo and that condo on the same day, my okay. first deal. Mm -hmm. And then when I came back, I actually closed on these two deals on the same day. Mm -hmm. So that I never even thought about that mm -hmm. when I came back in the business, when I started and when I came back, I closed on two deals on the same day to get, get going. But the week before that, I had to borrow 500 bucks from my dad. You were saying you had to borrow some money from somebody no, or something. My mom brought me groceries. Yeah. Your mom she, brought you she groceries. Worried about me. Yeah. I had to borrow 500 bucks from my dad the week before just to kind of make it through with gas and food mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But anyway, um, 2008 is when I got back in. And it was it was the easiest thing ever. Hmm. Um, what were you doing? Short sales and stuff, or what were you doing? I, I was representing buyers on foreclosures. Gotcha. So I was just putting it out there. Hey, look at the beach. Isn't that beautiful? And guess what? It's fifty percent the price it used to be. Right. To have a place here, fifty percent off. Right. You know, and so people were coming out the woodworks no to kidding. buy these things. No I mean, it was fifty percent no off. Wow. Um, so I know it was, financing was challenging back then. Was that a hurdle for you? Or were these, these were all, these are all wealthy people, right? Gotcha. I don't know. They, some of them might've been paying cash, but okay. 
financing wasn't a problem for these people, gotcha. you know. Gotcha. But this was uh, so easy, man. Hmm. It was it was incredible. So I made like a hundred grand that year. Hmm. You know, I was making like forty five on the rig, and I, I double it. Sitting yeah, in an so office. This is 08, 08 and 09. This is 08, yeah. yeah. 2008, I made like 100 Gs, and, mm-hmm. and, and it, that was my comeback year. And I was like, you know, I was out here risking my life on a rig. I watched people get hurt bad. Did you? To, to sit in an office like where I are now, making, making twice as much money, you know? For me, I have a different perspective, you know, because I've been through the roofing and the oil rig and serving tables and all this stuff. Well, uh, then it was just off to the races, man. And my thought was, let me go represent buyers on these foreclosures. Mm -hmm. In three years, when the foreclosures go away, prices will go up. They'll sell that and upgrade to another. There's Mm -hmm. two more deals. They'll Mm -hmm. refer five people to me who will also upgrade in three years and refer more people to me and so on and so forth. So I kind of understood the game the second time around. The Mm -hmm. first time around, I was just closing the deal. Is that what happened? Yeah, that's what happened. No kidding. The first time around, I just was doing a deal with someone and then I never talked to them again. Right. They didn't want to talk. They made 200 grand. So you learned how to build the business. I learned how to build the business. I, I it was it was a false the first time around, you know, I was kind of like in this dream world where you didn't have to build relationships, you can make a million bucks and Well, that's how you grow, man. You you learn as you grow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah. So, so then I built it the right way, these lifelong relationships with with clients and uh, by 2014 I was selling 100 properties a year. Hmm. I was a number one Remax agent in Alabama. I was with Remax for 10 years. Hmm. And then I was a number one agent for a long time. I was a number one agent in my whole market for eight years in a row. I did 100 deals a year for eight years in a row, nice. just me hmm. and an assistant. I was the buyer agent. I was the listing agent. You know, I didn't have a team or anything. Hmm. And uh, then in 2017, the first year I made a mill, that's when I wrote the two books. I was like, wow, this is a great story. Let me just get all this on paper and uh get this out you know so people did your life story in in the books kind of not really Mm -hmm. it was more like the business story not the life story gotcha and um the first one was kind of like the basics uh, more of like the storyline the second one teaching what you learned yeah the first one was the basics kind of what like my story more so the second one was what i learned through the crash like the fundamentals of what I learned actually from the crash that got me to where I could actually build the business correctly Mm -hmm. to get to the hundred deals. So I did the two books, they took off and then I started coaching and writing and creating content and everything else for realtors. Yeah. For realtors. Mm -hmm. And then I just through that, I became the world's first completely free coach Mm -hmm. and my services are still free. The the mission is to reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry, one agent at a time, which we've Mm -hmm. done massively. I mean, yesterday in Sarasota, I was like, how many people are here are already following me, which I only expected a couple because of the type of group it is. You know, it's it's through the board. It's not a Rick. Some of these events, I go to a Ricky events mm-hmm. where I show up and there's 400 agents. They all follow me, been mm-hmm. following me for a long time. And it's it's a different vibe. Right. These of this event, I didn't figure there would be a whole lot. About half the room was and half the room wasn't. So it was right. a mixed crowd. And in the middle of my speech, um, you know, I said, this is my mission and everything. How many of you here who are following me feel like you wouldn't even be in the business anymore if it wasn't for my content, my coaching, stuff like that. And there were six people that stood up and I was like, wow, you know, feels good. Yeah. So we're, we're, I've massively helped people stay in the business and understand, you know, that things I learned through the crash are just that closings happen every day, regardless. Um, business is unlimited and you got to kind of put relationships over transactions. You know, I don't, when I call a prospect, I'm not calling to try to sell that house or do that deal. I'm calling to use that property as an excuse to see if I can connect with this person and see what it is they want to do. And if I can help them do it. Well, this, by the way, guys, I know you're like, what does this have to do with multifamily? Well, these, these strategies are the same strategies you'd use to connect with a seller, the same strategies you'd use to connect with a potential investor for your deals. So, um, you know, th- this is this is good content for, you know, what we do. Uh, and uh, and I know the same now stuff. you're using your money to, 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 you know, invest in other real estate asset classes. You said you're in some industrial uh, or warehouse stuff. You're building, you bought some land to maybe build a, a number of multifamily. Yeah, I'm really excited about that, honestly. Yeah. So there's, I've been looking for property. I've, I've put about four different pieces under contract with due diligence mm-hmm. to see if I could build apartments and mm-hmm. how many I could do and stuff. And I've struck out on 
on all of them until now. Mm. I've got this three acres. It's actually like two miles from my house. Oh, nice. And it's on this beautiful corner. Mm. And, you know, this is right really down the road from where they're building that new school and everything. But, uh, and it's like 10 minutes from the beach. And it's got you know? the right zoning or you have yeah. to rezone? It's no, got the no, right it's, zoning it's, and you think yeah. you can put 38 units on there? 48 is 48, what we're shooting 40. for. It's actually right. zoned for 60, but we're regulated by how many parking spots we can right. fit on the property. Right. Um, the city was like, I think we think you can get about 30 there, but you know, an engineer really kind of lays it out and tells you, but the engineer drew it out and, uh, it looks like two buildings, 24 units per building with a pavilion in the middle and a dog walking area and then all the parking out front. Mm. Um, but man, I'm excited about it cause, uh, cool. you know, it's right down the road from my house. It'll be a new building that I'll own. Nice. And, uh, how far from the beach would, it's like 10 minutes, 10, 10 minutes, minutes from oh, the beach. Nice. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. Nice. So that's, what's cool. It's, it's in the Gulf Shores school district, close to the beaches, Very but it's cool. still kind of off the beach a little, you know? So it's a little bit protected from the storms. Have you done any building or is this be new for you? I've built houses. Houses. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I've done okay. some, 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 yeah, uh, me too. I've done some houses, but I've never built a uh, multifamily. So. Are you going to hire a builder or are you going to oh, hire one? Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. yeah. Very I'll cool. bring somebody in to... Uh, so so these will be like two-story buildings then? Three. Three-story. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Well, I it's something I'm very interested in doing mm -hmm. here in Florida uh, as well. And I just hired somebody to join my my CREE -E Capital team, Cree Capitals, uh, CREE Equity Capital is the name of the my acquisitions company. And... I just hired this uh, really rock star kid that's uh, joined the team to really work Florida hard. You know, and, and the way I look at Florida right now is if we can find a deal that we can break even on or make a little bit of money on with the insurance the way it is, at some mm. point it's going to settle down. And you think? I think it will. Yeah. I don't think it will yeah. stay high like that. I don't think it can. That's kind of how I think about really any investment right now and these, these high interest rate, mm -hmm. you know, like just take single family for, you know, or, or, or multifamily or whatever. You know, if you if you buy it in this high interest rate environment and it's cash flowing, right? right. So, like for example, um, I've got one that that's at uh, it's a duplex and it's at like seven and a half percent on oh, an wow. investment, hmm. um, but it cash flows six hundred a month or so. Hmm. And you think, oh, okay, six hundred a month. You know, why are you doing that? We're not getting rich. Well, the thing is, is that over t if it's cash flowing in this market, okay. Over time, rent's going to go up. It may settle out. It may go down a little, but it'll settle out. And it always it'll, goes up. It, it, it'll it'll settle out and it'll increase. You know, two three percent, whatever. It's going to increase. So that's going to increase your cash flow. But then your your monthly payments are going to go down as you refinance in mm -hmm. four years right. at one and a half percent lower or whatever you do. Right. And so your cash flow from this point is going to do nothing but increase, and your your expenses are is going to decrease. decrease and yeah. that gap between your monthly payment and your 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 rent is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger over time. So it's. I, Deals are a little harder to find now because of interest rates, but they are out there. No, they're there if you hunt. You and know, if you, you find hunt. something that cash flows today, right? Wow, I mean, it's all it's, about cash flow, guys. Don't yeah. buy anything that doesn't cash flow. Oh, period. absolutely. So number one, that's a, the, the, that's why there was a commercial deal that I wanted, cash flow. and it was a five or six cap, and it was like one point two mil. It's a commercial duplex, really nice, brand new building. It's got mm. Smoothie King and a coffee shop, and mm. I loved it. Um, but I was going to have to put about a half a million down just to break even every month on it. Mm. So I'm thinking I get a 0% cash on cash return for a half a million bucks. I'm like, I'm that not doing sense. that deal. No, you know? that sense. Yeah. I, I, my, my bare minimum on cash on cash used to be 10. Yeah. I've dropped it some, I'm down to about eight now, but, uh, yeah, you know, I, I anything, anything over eight on a cash on yeah, cash to me is beautiful. Right. 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 And by the way, if you don't know what cash on cash return means, it's the amount of money you make every year on the amount of money out of pocket. So if you put a hundred grand in a deal and you get 10 grand a year, that's a 10% cash on cash return. And that's one metric. The other metric is called an internal rate of return. And that's the total return you get like over a five year period or whatever period you decide to pro forma it on. And, and that'll include um, principal reduction on your debt It'll include the cash flow. And it'll include, of course, you know what you sell it for the the appreciation you sell it for but that's the mm -hmm. internal rate of return the irr but uh so so where do you think we're headed economically i mean do you do you think it's going to be a shit show or do you think it's it's going to be bad or you know i, mean, I don't know man they keep they keep putting a band-aid on it yeah you know 
I mean, well, I, I I feel like you're kind of bullish. I, I just feel that when I see your posts and stuff, you're kind of bullish I'm bullish on, on the housing market. Okay, because right? I'm bearish. I, yeah. I think the I think the, the the proverbial shit's about to hit the fan. Yeah, I really do so. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. And the the cool thing is, is what I learned is, I mean, like it just doesn't matter to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can make money in any cycle, yeah. In any I mean, part of the cycle. If you know, investors buy no matter what. Right. Um, the good ones, mm -hmm. and if prices go down, I was telling the the agents the yesterday in Sarasota, uh, you know, I mean, can you imagine how easy it's going to be to sell real estate if prices go down yeah. 20, 30, 40%? Especially in Florida. I mean, you it's can't, you be, can't pee, keep people, people away from Florida. Here. It's going to be ridiculously right. easy right. to sell real and, and And if we do see a shit show, right. that means mortgage rates are going to come down. Yeah. I mean, they're going to they're, I mean, they're going to have to cut rates if we see something else. So, so now you're going to have cheaper prices with cheaper mortgage rates. I mean, it's just going to be a gosh. It's, yeah, I it mean, could be, could be opportunity for, for your demographic for sure. So, so if it, you're so, an agent listening, obviously you need to follow Ricky. He's uh, he uh, he has an incredible um, a ton of free stuff that he does and uh, um, and and just, I do trainings every week. You, you know, do prospecting. Just, so, yeah, go to his Instagram, by the way. That's that's where he's he's huge. You got a huge follower, like three hundred thousand or something. There, it's right? like I, I just I hit two four two hundred forty five thousand like two days ago. Oh, I was like, damn, I'm still growing. <laughs> I'm still at one hundred and six. I'm pathetic, but but yeah, two hundred forty five. That's awesome, bro. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. yeah. And it, um, I'm about to hit a hundred thousand on YouTube. Oh no, okay. And wow. um, good for you. And man, I was telling you, like, the freaks were like, I really didn't oh, have yeah. much. We were talking before we started recording about haters, and uh, you know, we talk, you know, because we get haters, and and you know, you're a slum lord, or you're just taking people's money. Nobody should own more than one house. I'm like, oh, for God. They really sense. hate me get because out I'm out here basement. saying prices are going to keep going up. You better right. buy now. Right. You know, on houses. You know, so they so that's really. The hate, that's the hate you get. Oh. They really hate me because yeah. they're like, I can't, I can't afford. You know, like, <sighs> I can't even buy milk. You know, and you're talking about buying a house, but yeah, we, you know, we talked about it. Sometimes I get sucked into it, and I'll try to kick somebody in the butt if they if they hate on me. And when and, and when they hated on Tiffy is when I really got upset. But uh, now I just block them until lead them it's like good lord you know it's just uh it's it's and, and you know the thing about haters is they never have more than you do you know they just they're just entitled and or feel terrible yeah about their most own people that talk or oh, normally talk about people that's way ahead of them right. in life hey, thank you know you. yeah so yeah and, um, and, and you know tiffy would tell me just ignore them and sometimes i'd get sucked in and hate on them back for a minute and then delete and block them but usually i just i try to i try to focus all my my responding time on the positive comments trying mm -hmm. to show them love mm -hmm. that makes a whole lot you more know sense. Yep. but like you see those negative ones and you're like man <laughs> yeah you know cardone says he loves it he said they've made him wealthy you know because he gets all that hate he probably has the most of anyone i've right. ever seen right right you know and i think he just ignores it and just even the people on. that like him i think hate right. on him. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it just yeah no it's uh, it's it's uh it's have you have you had him on twice yeah, okay cool yeah. yeah yeah he's a funny guy and you know i don't I, I i don't you know i think he does he does um he doesn't do value add he buys really high performing yeah. very expensive a, yes. assets and banks on rent at growth and i yeah. saw one of his pro formas and he had 10 percent a year for five years gro rent growth i'm like yeah. yeah i don't think so and so well it's hard to predict that i mean that's yeah, you want to be more 10, conservative 10 on your projections a year, come on you know but but you know uh We'll see. I mean, he's smarter than I am. He's got a jet and a helicopter. So, but uh, yeah, um, I, I I I get a kick out of him. And I, like I said, I went to his growth con. I paid twenty grand to sit in the front row just because I I like to be in the front row. And 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 it was a lot of fun. And you know, it was fun to practically high five Brady, Tom Brady, when he walked by, and so on and so forth. But um, but anyway, uh, you know, he's a he's a. He's a funny guy. I really I enjoy talking to him. I pissed him off the last time he, we, we interviewed, though, because we got a call from a, a vet because I took questions from, from listeners. And the vet said, like, should I use my VA to buy a fourplex? And I'm like, hell yeah, because it's no money down. And he's like, uh, no, buy a 16 unit because, you know, he's 10x everything. I'm like, Dude, Can you buy a 16 unit with a VA loan? No. no yeah, I mean, can't. like. No, no, but he, that was just him. You know, he's like, yeah. go bigger, go bigger, go home. But, but right. I'm like, Grant. 
dude, it's no money down. If, if that gets them started, do it. It pissed right. him off a little. I could see it on his face. But, but I mean, you yeah. can't even buy a 16. You can only buy no, a 4-unit. No, no, no. But, but in his head, it's like, you know, just don't even bother with the 4-unit. Uh, any, anyway, it's, Well, you got to start somewhere. Thank you. I mean, and that's the thing. I see it in my students all the time. It's like the law of the first deal. It's the scariest. It takes the longest. Yeah. It's the most stressful. And they get one. Next thing I know, they have three. I'm like, what the hell just yeah. happened? Yeah. And and so, you know. It's and, kind of, it, it, like, like in today's world... You know the you know it, it, this syndication thing mm-hmm. you know has become a trending topic, mm-hmm. and so you got all these really inexperienced oh, well, people, they, and they're in, and a lot of them are in trouble. And they've done these deals at mm-hmm. two caps mm-hmm. and stuff, and now interest rates, and mm-hmm. you know it's not not a pretty sight. No. And um, even like I said, even very sophisticated world class operators that I was super impressed with, like the one I met at at the Growth Con, mm-hmm. um, really impressive guy. And and like I said, he was just in real page, had to give one back to foreclosure, and and uh, and you know, sad to see because uh, you know, it, but a lot of and and I've got a couple of bridge loans right now with my ex partner, and we're having we're having weekly meetings because he's gonna have to suck it up and and deal with it, um, but. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's 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 very painful on yeah. these assets, especially C assets that are struggling. Yeah. You know, and and I'll tell you, I I I, I won't buy a C asset right now or, or C minus for sure. Maybe maybe a C C plus I would consider, but because that demographic's getting killed. I mean, I went to the grocery store. I'm like, are you freaking kidding? Because I I'm recently kind of single. I, we shifted our relationship to a friendship, and so I'm buying my own groceries, and I'm like. Holy crap! I had no idea how expensive stuff is now, and gas, insane. Mm. You know, I don't know how people afford it. You know, people that just yeah. work paycheck to paycheck. And yeah. So, you know, I'm thinking that the, the I'm not thinking. I'm certain that the the D for sure and the C minus stuff. Those those people are, mm. are in trouble. I mean, yeah. And you know, I, I I I I saw an article about six eight months ago that 20 million families are behind in their utility bills. Mm. You know, and 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 uh, and a lot of people are paying everyday expenses with credit cards <laughs> what's wrong with that picture right yeah so i don't know well, well i think it's the shakes. band-aid i was talking about yeah. they keep putting on the economy right you know this is this is a result of that it's just mm-hmm. kicking the can down the road right. how long can you kick the can down the road you right. know right i think we're kind of in a we've been in a, an artificial bull market well that's that's for quite a while i i'm worried about a major reckoning yeah because of that we'll yeah. see you know they may go to digital currency may they do who knows what they'll do to try to manipulate things if it gets really ugly but uh but yeah, it's it's crazy times we're in right now. Um, between that and the politics and everything else, and what we can I see think I think for people listening, day. you know, that might hear that and be like, "Oh God, this is scary. Yeah, That's yeah. scary to think about and stuff right. like that." If you've never been through a massive shift or a massive uh, like economic, you know, downturn and everything, right. it can be scary. Sure, it's, no, it's um, going to be scary. But the opportunity. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If, it, if it's your first go around, then just sit back and enjoy the show. Right. And, and kind of just keep your head above water and kind of learn from from what happens. If you've already, if you were if you went through 08, right, then you're you're ready to roll. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, like I'm a, ready. I got crushed by that wave. I'm surfing this yeah, wave, baby. Yeah, Let me tell you. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I, you know, I told people at my boot camp, I'm like, if there were ever a time to get up to speed, it's right freaking now because mm-hmm. it's coming. Mm-hmm. You know, th- they're coming. The deals are coming. And there's a lot of money sitting on the sidelines waiting. But, you know, the 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 sweet spot probably for newbies is going to be under 50 units that the money in the sidelines probably has no interest in. So, but there, those, there's a lot of deals in that price range. In the housing probably. market, you know, back in the forties, there was about a five year double digit appreciation really? run hmm. and everybody said it's going to crash. Prices are up too high on affordability, the whole nine yards. This right? is after the baby boomers bought all those houses yep. back after world war. II. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It was a four year, four or five year double digit, Five years of double digit, ten or more percent increase in national home prices. And guess what? Home prices didn't go down any time after that. We fast forward to the late seventies when mortgage rates went up to nineteen percent. Um, you know, we had there was there were six uh big years, four were double digit, right? Two were almost double digit. Six, it was a run of six years. That next year, after that last double digit year, seven percent then five, then four, then 10 again, then eight. I mean, even if you bought at the peak. There were dips, though, but the, the, it continually every year, trended up. That, that, that's what I'm telling you. Every single year. See, this is what people don't realize until until these headlines start happening. And 
people start really looking at it with a magnifying glass is that every year the prices go down. Sure. If you look at national home prices, look at a chart, right? Look in your market, look anywhere, local, national, whatever. You see it goes, prices go up and down every single year. But they trend up. They trend up. Let me give you an example of kind of a cool example of, uh, you know, I had 500 houses in Denver at one time that are rented long term. Boy, I wish I had those now, man. They'd be free and clear. Ooh, they'd be I worth be, a lot. I would be bottom line netting a million a month right now. But mm -hmm. anyway, woulda, coulda, shoulda. But, but, but there was a house on 30th and Federal in Denver that I bought for 56000 threw a garage up, and sold it for 76000 Okay, I flipped it. Then, um, then the market crashed, okay? I bought that same house back for 18000 mm -hmm. okay? Same mm -hmm. house, seventy six to eighteen. I sit, kept it for a few years, and I sold it for one hundred and sixty. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. the area gentrified; it's worth a million now. Right. So, I mean, right. that's this. That's 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 just one house that I was aware yeah. of. There are a few of them that I bought back like that. I sold one for fifty six, bought it back for twelve, but uh, but they still continually trend up. I mean, that that that's those are anomalies. But my point is, is that that even if you you bought something at the peak of one of the, even in 08 back in the 2004 and 5 mm -hmm. if you bought at the peak of 05 when mm -hmm. prices peaked out beginning of 05 you're still up right now yeah no did problem. it go down that, that was that was the that was the worst real estate crash ever prices right. were down 50 percent but you're still up right now if you'd have kept whatever you had long term um yeah no agree agree completely now I, this this housing crash this is a crash mm -hmm. We're going to have about the same amount of transactions this year as we had in 08. Really? Yeah. We're having yeah. 4.3 million is what we're looking at, existing mm -hmm. home sales. And we had 4.12 million in 08, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's identical. No kidding. Interesting. Right? It's pretty much the same. This is a crash. Interesting. I'll say crash on social, and people are like, what crash? And then when they're talking smack because they're yeah. they're thinking prices. I'm not right. talking about prices. Your transactions. Volume. Yeah, volume. Um, but th this crash, because that's what this is, mm -hmm. is not it's it's more comparable to the late 70s interesting not 08 08 was a mortgage meltdown right. subprime lending right you know this is solid lending 45 percent of houses are owned free and clear really okay yeah and you know 30 percent of all sales now are cash interesting right um which is I up didn't know, i didn't know yeah that. i mean well we'll think about it i mean would you want to pay eight percent right. or you well, pay cash sense. right, right. let's pay sense. cash um we're just in a very super healthy market. So back in the seventies, you know, inflation went up, you know, when inflation went up to 9% last year, they said it's the highest in 40 years. When was that? You know, seventies, right? That, that, that everything is compared. The delinquencies right now for, for homes is the lowest it's been since 79, which mm -hmm. is exactly when all this is happening. The back then people didn't want to, you know, upgrade to something else or whatever, because, they didn't want to double their mortgage rate. Same as now. Yeah. It's all just eerily similar yeah. To, yeah. to back then. Yeah. Well, um, we, we had a crash back then, and, and uh, you know, when I bought all those houses in Denver, and I mean, I was buying houses in Denver from, oh, but this is crazy. Back then, uh, FHA, FHA loans were going south, and an investor could buy FHA foreclosure for $500 down. Wow. And they'd finance it. And and, uh, and VA was doing 5% down. And I was a broker and I got a 6% commission. Mm. So I'm like, hey, buy this freaking house. I'll throw the commission in. And I bought tons of houses that way too with partners, 50-50. Mm. Uh, you know, it was incredible back then. I mean, of course, you know, who oh, it'd be fun if that ever happened again, but uh, not likely. But, but uh, yeah. Well, I'm, my point with this is, is back then people said, oh, it's going to crash and stuff like that as far as prices go. Yeah. But they never did. Mm. Right, they they slowed down appreciation, right? Um, but they still were clicking along at a good four or five percent a year, and never had a negative year until the, the early '90s. Mm. There was a slight little dip then, um, but when I'm comparing now's housing market to the '70s, you know, my question is: even if we do see this, you know, Armageddon of the of the right. economy, right? Um, what does that going to do to home prices will it actually affect home prices because well temporarily it will well, well back not in long term back well every year they temporarily get affected right right, right. okay um back back then i mean i, I had a, i had some i had a good one you threw me off there for a second sorry. <laughs> sorry but uh oh man 
Well, here's the thing, though. Yes, they, they go back every year, but if we have an Armageddon, they're going to go way down like they did in 08 and 09. But they'll come back well, after a few years. Well, That's you, the you got, well, okay, here, but here's the difference. Back then, there were two to three million listings at any given time. Okay. You got a half a million right now. No shit. Half a million. I know that. Wow. In the 80s. Wow. In the 80s, okay, when there were way less population and way less houses that even existed, okay, mm -hmm. there were two to th uh, two to three million active listings at any given time. No kidding. Okay. It never got below two million. And right now in, you're in at the half a million. In the 80s. No kidding. Okay. And right now we're at f between five and 600,000 wow. in the whole country wow. for sale, okay? So, so with interest rates going up to seven and a half percent, we're we are at the place where only people that have to buy and sell are doing deals. Right. You're not buying. You're not doing a deal because you want to. Even the people that want to aren't doing it. It's only if you have to. Okay, and investors. Right. Right. So if the market dips, if 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 Armageddon, the economic Armageddon happens then are people that have to buy and sell not going to? No, they're still going to because mm -hmm. they have to. Right. And so with with the with the lack of inventory, and the inventory is going to go from bad to worst, and you might think, well, then we're going to see foreclosures, and then we're going to see, uh, well, you know. I, th I think so, if, if the market really gets ugly. I mean, just economically in general. I well, in 08, so. we had 4 million listings. You know, it, it was 2 to 3 million in, in the 80s. But then mm -hmm. in 08, when the crash happened... You know, we had four million. Hmm. So there's, it, it would have to be some really wild situation to get yeah. us from a half a million to four million yeah. um, to create this scenario, right? One thing I did hear, though, Ricky, is um, you know I, I had a litigation support company, and and uh, so we helped people in foreclosure. I built law firms in five states. We'd stop the foreclosure with litigation, and then we'd help them modify their loans, help thousands of families save their homes. But I sold that business a few years ago, and. I guess there's a pretty big backlog of foreclosures right now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so, you know, who knows, you know, how big that is. And, and you know, chances are those houses will be able to be sold because they still have equity in them because yeah. the prices have gone up so much. But there's a bunch of foreclosures still coming down the pipe because they had more, that moratorium. And it takes mortgage companies a long time to get their paperwork in order and get these more these four well, we need going. them yeah, right because we right, got okay, we got good. we got more 33 year olds than we've ever than yeah, we've seen yeah, in two okay, decades fair enough, fair enough we've fair got enough. home owners who are dying to upgrade because they need right. an extra bedroom i mean uh one of a guy that that a banker he, he bought something in 2020 their dream home but since then they had they had twins they already had two kids but mm -hmm. they had they had twins since then unexpected and now they they're a bigger house. They need one more room. Yeah, and they're yeah. like, we want to really bad. I mean, there's yeah. so many stories yeah, like this, sense. right? That makes sense. Now, how many, how many more millionaires do you think there are now than there was in 08? Sure, sure. Right? And how many of those learn from 08 and are setting themselves up to take advantage of the next any downturn? A bunch. A bunch. Right? Yeah. There's so many more people that are prepared for if an Armageddon happens to take advantage of, of whatever happens in the housing market. There's nowhere near the inventory that we were back then or any worry. I mean, if we had an influx of inventory, there's that if, if, if the inventory did affect prices, people would come out the woodworks. Yeah. You yeah, know, I, I think you could be right. Yeah, I think you could be right. So, so I think even if we see Armageddon, I don't see it affecting home prices too much. Yeah, that we'll we see. could see a little ebb and flow. Like last year, we saw a slight correction mm. during the same time of year. COVID? Not COVID, oh. when interest rates went up. Oh, gotcha. We, gotcha. We, 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 during the normal time of year in the fall when prices go down anyway. Okay. Okay. It went down a little more than normal. I see. Okay. A little more than normal, but it bounced right back and went back to all-time highs. Hmm. I mean, we're down to the bottom of the barrel the way I see it. For well, demand, based, based on the inventory, I think you're absolutely right. That, that's, that's well, good. listen, back in 08, there were 4 million transactions, right. and now we're at 4 million. That was how much worse do you think it can get? 08, you think it can get worse than 08 as far as demand? Yeah. The I number of people it. that are buying homes? I doubt it. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. That when it gets down to the people that need to, there's, there's nowhere else to go. You can't go any lower. Could it go down to 3.9 million? Maybe. 3.8, maybe. But we're down somewhere close to where hmm. we're going to have that many transactions, right? So when you're down as low as demand can go, and you have no inventory, even if inventory 
you know, spikes up a little bit, we're, you know, we're, it's... I don't think the inventory is going to spike, because I'll tell you, I, I know there's some statistics out there, and I, I can't, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I think we're like, in the next couple of years, we're two million short in housing units in general, not just, not just housing, and why but, is but that? places to live. And why is that? Where are the two million people coming from? I think it's population. I don't know. 33-year-olds. Oh, you think it's 33? 34-year-olds. 35-year-olds. 36-year-olds, right? It's family formations. Okay. It's people that are moving out of their mom's house or they're, yeah, no, they've got a roommate sense. and they're tired of living with somebody, right? Or maybe they're renting and they are tired of rent going up every year. Yeah. And they yeah, want okay. a fixed payment and they want to build equity. Yep. Yeah. Right. That's that's. I'm sure that's that's a, that's a huge demographic as well. So, you know, I enjoy talking to agents and brokers as well. And my whole push with them is, you know, if you're just going to sell other people's property, you're only as good as your last sale. Okay. Mm, mm. And but if you want to build cash flow, you invest in real estate. You don't mm. just sell real estate. I know yeah. you're doing that. You're obviously. I mean, you you've, done, you've bought a bunch of real estate. And you're mm. you're developing and you're buying. Do you agree with that framework where, you know, you make the money selling the real estate, but then you use that money to go buy assets, the cash flow, yes? Yeah, so most agents don't own real estate. Right, honestly, right, which is right? crazy. And yeah. they're in the perfect position to find the best deals. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're so focused on, you know, most of them come from a job or and they're just trying to be successful. Yeah. They're just trying to make money. Yeah. Um, and, and it's kind of a catch-22 because most agents' horizon is, I want to be the best in the in the area or to make a million bucks a year or something. I don't really think past that, you know, that's kind of all they're focused on. Yeah. Um, but they really kind of need to think past that. And, and what am I going to do to get out of this? Right, <laughs> Cause right. this is a rat right, race. It's a job. It's a freaking it is, job. Right. It is. But that could also be a distraction to you becoming the best in the market, which you need to be mm. or making a million bucks a year. Cause you, you need to make that so that you can invest in real estate. So it's, it's a very fine line. Really. I, I, I was, I was in the same boat where I was just trying to make a million bucks a year as an agent. Mm. I mean, I bought a few properties just because I thought, let me buy a few properties, but I wasn't like all in. I wasn't thinking, Oh, where's my next real estate deal? Where am I going to buy my next thing? I was focused on, how do I get another listing? Yeah, well, so, I will tell you. I think I think you know. I tell people grind for a few years, like most people won't. You live the rest of your life, like most people can't, right? Well, well, well most agents say, oh, "I love sales. I'm gonna do sales forever." Mm. I said it too right. until the day that you don't. When when your clients calling you and you're cringing, right? You see on the caller ID, oh, there's this million dollar house I'm gonna go look at, and when you don't want to go see a million dollar house to list, right, right. you know that's when you know right. that you should have put something in place. Right. So I watched two agents literally die making calls. No kidding. Yeah, they 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 died from old age, and they were legends, just wow. incredible people. And they, uh, you know, they out. they knew they were dying, right? They got the call. We got the call. And the next day, there they are in the office making calls. And I'm like, what's going on? Wow. Well, they're in their call for sale by owners and expireds, trying to make as much as they can to leave their spouse as much as they can before they pass away. They make calls till three days before they die where they can't get out of bed God. And, and pass away making calls, calling for sale by owners and expireds. Good. And God. that and that was such an eye opening experience for me. Yeah. You know, I, I that's when I was like, I'm not gonna live like this. And that's yeah. when I started the coaching stuff, mm -hmm. right? I was like, I gotta have another let me try to build this other business. Sure. Um sure. And then, you know, here recently, you know, I I flipped about a hundred houses with two other partners mm -hmm. and I'm like, geez, if we'd have kept the best thirty of those, oh my gosh, we'd have been a so now when we flip, I'm doing one right now that we're that we bought together. Yeah. And, you know, we go in thirds and we fix it up and flip them. Well, I'm I'm buying the other two guys out. Actually, one of the other guys. So you're going to keep it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because it fits my buy box, you Perfect. know, for, yeah. what, for, what I'm, for what I'm buying and stuff. But to, to your point. You're right. Um, every agent needs to. needs to Start building be, an annuity. You got to be thinking. Right. I, I need to buy passive income because. Right. You, you, you just have a job, a really high paying job, but it, it's still a job that you have to go to every day. And you literally have the opportunity right there in the palm of your hand right. to build passive income where later on you can still do sales, but not because you have to. Right. And yeah. then eventually you won't want to, and you'll be in a position where you can just walk away. Well, even those of you listening that don't do real estate, that have a job, 
you know, and maybe you have an, a high income job. Yeah. You have a golden handcuffs. You've got a great big high paying W-2 job. You need to be investing mm -hmm. in real estate either passively, you know, text the word partner to 72345. You want to invest passively with me or actively, you know, get your butt to one of my boot camps and learn how to do this actively because, you know, otherwise every year you're just going to go back to work. January now, you, 1st, you don't have to do again. this. Yeah, you, no, I like, do this because like I love podcast, it. Like this podcast. I don't like I do this doing all I love this it, stuff. Man. I, 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 my first episodes, you know, I just want to tell people about what happened to me in 2008 and nine and, you know, um, how I, I really, I'm a proponent for multifamily versus single family, just because mm -hmm. of the way, what happened to me and, uh, what, what did happen? What's your so debate I had eight, there? I had 800 houses uh, along the Gulf coast of Florida here from mm -hmm. Newport, Ritchie, all the way down to Bonita Springs, but I was spread out over two hours in each direction. So mm -hmm. logistically it wasn't the greatest move, mm -hmm. uh, but then I also had some apartment complexes and I was only at a 30% loan to value in my whole portfolio and I still crashed and burned. And here's mm -hmm. why, you know, if I had to send a maintenance guy to one of my apartment complexes, we stockpile all the parts. So mm. they're in and out in an hour. Mm. Well, if I had to send them to a house that's an hour and a half away, every house is different. They got to go see what's wrong, mm -hmm. go find a Home Depot or a Lowe's where we have an account, mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. all day. Mm -hmm. And these were C-class houses, older, yeah. a tougher demographic, tons of maintenance. So I never really cash flowed, yeah. okay? Even yeah. at 30% loan to value, I never cash flowed. Right. You know, and, and of course, Florida has no state income tax, higher property taxes. Okay. I had properties in wind and flood zones, higher insurance. All yeah which impacts cash flow yeah and um you know and then uh when it all imploded oh and the last thing was i didn't pay attention to tenant demographics back then i had a lot of contractors plumbers electricians drywallers painters roofers that had good credit paid a deposit i assumed everything was great well they had no work hmm. so so in 08 and 09 they crashed they couldn't pay the rent hmm. and so it just crashed and burned now you want to hear something crazy my portfolio went upside down. It actually dropped 70, 70, a little over 70%. Mm. That's how much it crashed here. Mm. Uh, but, uh, but that's why I crashed and burned. But my multifamily through all that pulled back about 11%. Could have easily survived, uh, like value. No, 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 no. Or rent, rent uh, gross income, uh -huh. and could have easily survived if I hadn't cross collateralized. Thinking yeah, I yeah, was yeah. brilliant with packages of houses, right? So I lost it all. But you know, I started my podcast what seven, eight years ago, just to say, hey, if you're going to buy and hold, for God's sakes, you know, look at multifamily. Don't, yeah. don't just do single family and. You know, I used to say my early, early episodes of my podcast, I'll never sell you anything because I never planned to. I just wanted to add value. And now I'm a liar because I sell everything. But, you know, uh, I, I, wrote, I wrote this book, you know, how to create lifetime cash flow through multifamily properties. And mm -hmm. I just I still mm -hmm. give it away. I give away tens of thousands of copies of it. Um, and, uh, you know, and then now I now I do coaching and courses. But I love yeah. it. I mean, I freaking love it. And I don't you know, it's, it's not about the money for me. I, I literally love it. I'm, I'm the lowest price by far out of anybody that does this and uh, half price in, some, in most cases for my coaching and my boot camp was $200 for three days without a big sales pitch. Yeah, like yeah, a no yeah. brainer. Right. I mean, if you go to my social media and you see what people said about it, you know, they're yeah. raving about it. they're like, they couldn't believe they got all that value. Yeah. But you know, like you, you do your stuff for free. I, I do my stuff for practically free mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, power. I did, I did a boot camp. I did a, a workshop. I charged 700 bucks mm. for it last year. Uh, yeah. I had a hundred people. Yeah. Um, and people came in from to Gulf Shores from all over. Mm. You know, I mean, I had to charge because the venue was oh, sure, it's X expensive. amount, and the yeah, you know, no, it's expensive, I mean, man. But I had a thousand people, you know, so I, I broke even on the venue and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but uh, and we did some VIP where they had dinner and they paid more, and and so I broke <coughs> even. But, yeah. So before we go, because we've got limited time, right? You you saw you, you you made the mistake with the single family back then. Mm -hmm. Now after all that, knowing what you know now. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you could build the, the single family portfolio back a different I, I way would, that's more protective? Yeah, maybe, maybe like you're doing, if you've got them in a subdivision, they're brand new. And But I would, the big thing that I, I wouldn't do it again, no, because I, I like multifamily. I'd rather yeah. do one transaction and get 50 units than buy 50 houses, yeah. uh, one by one. Okay, it's just scale is, it's easier. Yeah. And every house has its own insurance, has its own taxes. So from a cash flow standpoint, I like multifamily yeah. better. A yeah. whole lot of reasons I like it better, but but we don't have to debate that well, now. Well, that's but, why I'm building a 30, well, I mean, that's a 48 right. unit. And you my, said you're thinking about shifting to syndication my, and stuff. My, right. my whole thing is a multifamily. Like right. that's where I'm going. Okay. I'm buying these single families for it's a lot of fun. Work. Yeah, it's okay? fun. I, I would do it for fun. Yeah, okay? I, I mean, would do it it, for I'm fun. doing it because I'm bored and I right. have Got cash you. sitting there and I Got need you. to do something. Like, I'm right. just doing it just to get some cash flow until these right. mother load deals come through. Right. You know, and I think they're coming. Yeah. Well, 
Well, listen, brother, I appreciate you coming down here. It's great to meet you. I mean, I know we both spoke at the WealthCon Ryan Panita's event and, and kind of cross paths there. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a small world we're in. You know, a lot of, lot of speakers that, that bounce around. Brad Lee was there and some people that I really enjoy. But, uh, but Andy Elliott, just uh, real rock stars in, in their respective spaces. And it was a lot of fun. But it's a great to finally meet you. And, and, uh, and I appreciate you coming down. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, Enjoyed absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you.